Hello, my name is Cesar, and in this video, well, we will we'll start a video series about a coding life, um, a naming convention manager, I guess, uh, in Python. So the idea is to have like a configurable naming convention for your tools. So if you ever need to change that, uh, your tools uh, keep working. So you still can use the names uh, to extract that metadata, like the site or the type of control uh, of object or whatever. But you don't hard code that, or you don't take assumptions. Right? There's a configuration layer in between. So that's the goal. Um, so yeah, we're going to do like a series of ten videos, uh, ten minutes a video, probably. Uh, hopefully not more than that. And we're going to implement this step by step uh, live, so so you can see how I make mistakes and all that stuff. <laughs> okay, let's go. So let's start by let me open a terminal here, and I'm going to create a folder called naming. So in naming, uh, we need a few things. I want to use Git for the version control thing. So that's it. Then we need to create uh, two files. So naming.py and test naming.py. Uh, so we have those two files there. Uh, what else? Uh, my my Python, my default Python in this in this computer. It's Python 3, as you can see there. But I want to develop on Python 2. So I also have Python 2. But I don't want to, I want to create like a virtual environment. So Python 2 becomes default what, when I'm in that environment. I hope that makes sense. So I want to create a virtual environment there called BEMF. And now let me activate BEMF. Oh, damn it. Okay, there we go, sorry. Cool, so now my Python is Python 2, and we are ready to go. So I'm going to use BIM, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to open naming and test naming. So, test naming is here, naming is here. Uh, you can see the file name over there, and over there, okay? Cool. So let's start by the test naming. Oh, sorry, first, let me set uh, a clock and let me send that to the other, okay. Okay, so let's start by, uh, by test, move this out of the way. So I'm going to imp uh, import a unit test because it's out of the box, it's in the standard library, so it kind of makes sense. And we're also going to import naming as n. Naming is this a blank file I have in the other pane. So in order to use unit test, we need to do a few things. Uh, we need to create, well, uh, if main, uh, we are going to call unit test main. So that when I run this, make sure that it execute all the tests uh, defined in the file. And we're going to define my first test case. So this will be solve case. And this has to inherit from unit test test case. Yes. And then the test itself is a method called test whatever. So this will be explicit. Um, yeah, test is explicit. It's all right. We can change the names later. So if I do that and I run this, you can see that it now say it run one test. So that's cool. That's working. Unit test is working. I also have a warning saying that I'm not using uh, naming yet. The library, well, the file that we're supposed to write. So let's fix that. Uh, so okay, let me think what would be the most basic thing to do. So let's say we have a name. So name would be equals to uh, 
Fu underscore L underscore anim. Just something, whatever. And now I want to use the library naming, so n dot, and I want to get a string like that, but uh, using some tokens. So I will call that solve, the solve method, and I'm going to pass uh, a description would be equals to foo. Then the next thing is the side will be equals to left. And then the type will be equals to animation. Okay, and let's call this uh, if the, uh, solved. And now I want to test assert equal that uh, solved is equal to name. So I know it looks super verbose and that's why it's explicit, but we have to start somewhere, right? So if I run this, it's it's good. We have an error saying that the module uh, has no attribute solve because we haven't implemented anything yet. But that's good because now we have something to, to test if the code that we're writing works. Okay. Uh, so the first thing would be create this solve function. It will take uh, any number of keyword arguments. Um, for now, it's empty. And if I run the test, now it says that none is different than the name we're supposed to, to get. So let me copy this. Let's think a little bit about this. Okay, so one thing we can do is to use uh, Python formatting uh, capabilities to, to do the substitution, right? So let's call this rule, could be whatever, and let's replace this by description, this by side, and this by type. So if you're not familiar with this, look for format in the Python documentation, and you will see that you can use format. Uh, so I, with this in Python, I can do format, and I can say description equal foo, and it will do the replacement for me, right? So that seems very similar to what we want. So that's one thing. So that's kind of the pattern. Uh, the second thing is now the the token itself. So if you take a look here, I'm passing as a side left, and I want it to solve to L, capital L. And I'm passing animation, and I want it to solve to anim. So looks like I need uh, tokens. I will call, yeah, tokens. Let's call it like that. So this will be a dictionary with a bunch of tokens. So the first thing is description. And description seems to be, sorry, like an, uh, a thing that we need to pass in, like custom per name. So we're going to assign that to none. Then we have site and site have a few alternatives. So we're going to use a dictionary there and say uh, left will be equals to left, right will be equals to right, uh, middle will be equals to middle, is it right? Yes. And we can use more, like we can use center will be equals to middle, to M. So whatever, I guess the user will configure this, will pass this stuff in, we'll figure out that later. Um, and we have like this uh, little room to do some replacement. And then we have type. And this is probably also a bunch of uh, types, but we have animation for now, and this equals to an M. So 
So that's what we have for now. And as I said, we will figure out how the user can set those later on. But that's the information we have. So, of course, if I run the test, it's still failing. So we need to use those in the solve method. So a very simple way. Uh, so let me create a dictionary here. And then we're going to iterate on the keyword arguments. So key and value in keyword arguments. And we're going to, it's very simple. We're going to say uh, uh, values with that key will be equal to whatever is in there. No, that's not true. It will be equals to, okay, let's say we need a lookup table and this will be equals to tokens. Okay, okay, so now we have known that internal dictionary and that internal dictionary. And now we need to say, okay, if lookup is none, which is the case of description, we want to say values, the key will be equal to a value directly. So it will be equal to foo. And we continue. Otherwise, we'll say the values that key will be equals to lookup with the same key. No, with the value. Yes. And at the end, we can do the Python thing. So we do rule.format and we can pass in uh, the values. It's very simple. And if I run the test, it's passing. So let's try, let's try a different one just to make sure this thing's working properly. So what if this is uh, M uh, on this side can be center? Uh, that, does it solve it? It solve it. So that's a first step of the explicit. Uh, I don't know how we're doing with time. Oh, we're just in time. So that would be the first video. Uh, the next one, we're going to take a look at default um, values um, for the improve uh, this uh, library. So I hope you like it and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.